My name is Bruce van Eck and I'm from Spring, South Africa. I would like to introduce you to a radical new theory that is destined to change the world once understood. My theory is about transparency. So let's have a quick look at what transparency entails. Transparency is the sequencing of events into a meaningful moment encompassing the present, the past and the future. Once you get to understand this, the transparency of the present, the past and the future into a single moment of awareness, once this is totally understood, then everything that you have ever encountered, literally everything will start to make sense. But to be able to understand this, we also need to get to understand time for what it really is. When we look at time, then we should not be looking at time uh, from the perspective of Einstein's theory of relativity. Although Einstein's theory is 100% correct, it couldn't be further from the truth. This is a very bold statement but a statement that I can certainly justify. At this stage, I will not go into that. We can go on to this subject only once my theory is totally understood. You will note throughout the videos that I'm about to make that I will stumble across my words. Um, I will make a lot of errors, but the urge of you to just ignore it. Um, I've been called to be dyslexic many a time. I've been diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactive disorder many years ago by a very well renowned psychiatrist, Dr. Jiba. But that's enough said about myself. So let's start out and uh, talk a bit more about my theory. Once it's understood, then it will make total sense of autism. Autism will be understand in a way like never before. So all of those out there that suffer from autism or those that have children of autism, please listen to my theory because you will certainly learn something. And by learning my theory, then we are destined to change the outcome of autism and make it a better world for everybody. Not only will we get to learn about autism and what it really entails, we will also learn what Asperger's syndrome is really about. We will also learn what causes seizures, what's the real cause of seizures. You can go ask any neurologist and they will tell you it's an overflow of electric energy that causes it. But I don't know what causes these electrical energies. So what they then do, they do certain operations and they basically cut the bridges between certain functionalities of the mind. We will look at things like sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is an old age phenomenon that has been haunting mankind since the first man came on this planet. Until this day, sleep paralysis is believed to be demons and a lot of other things haunting you in your sleep, sitting on your chest, choking you, taking your breath away. Um, then also deja vu. Deja vu, there's certainly been hundreds of millions of dollars being spent on research regarding any of these. But until this day, nothing is really clearly understood about it, other than speculations, very valid speculations. But still, <coughs> if you want to understand something by starting to dissect the human mind and by doing MRI scans and all relevant studies, then you will certainly find anomalies between so perceived normal and abnormal people like people with autism is perceived to be abnormal which couldn't be further from the truth they are just different 
different in their minds. Their way of thinking is different. And otherwise humanity get to accept it for what it is. That we are the same species, but we have different abilities. Then will we truly get to understand this. We can go on to a lot of, a lot of other things. Like I said, deja vu. What really causes deja vu? Um, but before we can get to understand any of these phenomena of which there are many, we have to take a very close look at time. I will only cover time very briefly just to set the basis for what we are going to learn in this first episode. So, if we look at time, like I said, we should respect time for what it really is. So let's first go over transparency again. I stated that transparency is a sequencing event encompassing the present, the past and the future. Now when I'm going to talk about time, you will find that I'm contradicting myself. The statements I will make about time and the statements I just made here will be a total contradiction. But once I'm finished explaining time, then you will see the other one goes hand in hand with the other. It's only once we get to understand this that we'll, you will then discover that I'm actually not contradicting by my, uh, I'm not contradicting myself. So Before we carry on, what do we really know about the human mind? I can assure you, nothing. That what we know is not possible of enabling us to really get the full grasp of the human mind. A lot, very last word before we begin. I would also like to acknowledge all the dedicated and hard work, not only by the scientific community over the ages, but all the hard work by each and every individual that has never been acknowledged for what they have done. As such, I would like to quote something that I wrote a while ago. No single man has, nor ever will, be capable of any profound discovery without having trampled upon the hard bolt foundations constructed from the blood, sweat and tears of others. And that includes me. Although my theory is new as far as I'm, I'm concerned, I can lay claim to no individual discovery. There might certainly be or there might not be pieces that you will learn that might be new, but that doesn't matter. What really is important is that we get to understand the human mind. I would also urge of you, if over these videos you learn something, and you find it to be important or even if it only makes our world more understandable then I would ask you to please share it with your friends and pass it on to as many people as possible and let's change this world for the better. Thank you. So now I said we're going to have a quick look at time Time is sequential. Time is subjective to nothing, not even to itself. Time is a continuous flow from moment to moment. The size of the moment, whether it be a prank moment or a second, does not matter. What is important 
that we get to realize that time flows. When you look at a transparency and compassing the past, the present and the future, then one planned moment can only consist of the present moment. It's only by combining two or three or more Planck moments, which is the smallest unit in time that we know of at this stage. Only by combining three can we have the past, the present and the future. But we'll go into that deeper. So if you look at a second, if you have to divide it up in three units, then a second will consist of billions of Planck past moments, billions of Planck present moments and billions of Planck future moments. This will start to make sense eventually once we get to further understand the theory. If we look at Einstein's theory of relativity where he states that the faster the object moves through space, the slower time will become. Time cannot become slower or become faster except in the human mind. Only through the human mind can we manipulate time in a such a way as to perceive it to be going faster or slower. If time was to be a color, if this is the totality of the universe, and we have to look at, let's just redraw it here so we can see it. If time was to be a color, and let's say time changed from color to color from moment to moment, the first moment it was red, then white, then green, whatever colors you would like. Then at any single moment in time, the whole universe would only be one single color. The universe can never be more than one color at any one moment of time. So either it's red at the one moment, or blue at the next, or green at the next. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, with time changing according to the speed of light, that would mean that the universe will look like a rainbow consisting of a lot of colors. But like I said, that is something I will only discuss in detail once my theory is totally understood. So let's remove this board here. Yeah? Before we do that, I just want to um, take you a bit deeper into the theory. If we look at a future, which is our subconscious minds, the present, which is our consciousness, and the past, which is stored memory. This will start making sense once we go a bit deeper into this theory. <coughs> but like I said, first we need to understand time a bit better. Let's divide it up in units. Like I said, the, the size or the duration of the unit is not really that important. If this is a planned moment, then billions and trillions and trillions of these planned moments would constitute the size of the universe. Okay. 